This little creek is one of the richest spots I've ever found for alluvial gold. Today I'm armed with a whole bunch of stuff. I've got my wooden potato pan, Bruce's warehouse buckets, homemade willy pump, and a D-rocker. And that's important because the gold price has now reached a record high of over 4,000 Australian dollars per troy ounce. This means you can make a full day's wage using nothing more than a gold pan, a shovel, and a bucket. And because you got no boss hanging over your shoulder, you're probably gonna have a better day on the creek than you ever would with your old mate Larry. Holy crap, it is um, it's quite bright today. That's right, Fern and I have returned to a creek in a brand new private permission where we're looking for not only gold, but we have the possibility of discovering host rock garnets. In fact, the last time I was here, I found some truly amazing gold. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it up here or up here. I'll link it somewhere. I've seen what you were going to do. You are not rolling in wombat poop. Return to the creek. Get in the creek. All of my amazing gold came out of this trench here, and I didn't think there was much special about this trench until I got home and did the cleanup. Yes, the cleanup, Fern. What I discovered was garnet on host rock, meaning that this crevice I thought was just a regular old gold crevice is actually schist. Schist that's producing garnets. I'm here for the gold. I'm going to follow this trench and see if I can't find any more big nuggets and pickers like I did the other day. But I'm first going to look through my waste rock because I think, Fernie, that some of this waste rock is going to contain garnet crystals. Look at that! That's a hell of a rock. Understanding where the gold is here is very easy. There's a whole bunch of erosion on this side. All that dirt has to cascade over this bedrock. Now, the bedrock crevices may be really good to check, but because they're scoured, it's likely that the fast water has pushed it into this wider section of creek. And that's exactly what I found. We've got shallow bedrock that runs across the creek in this direction, and then it forks at this point and creates crevices running in the opposite way, and I found lots of gold in all of these crevices. Fernie, we are going to do a bit of a first-person view today because it is a lot easier to go hand-free and I get a lot more pans done in that time get in the creek so the gold was going this way this is the direction that i want to keep going because it was damn good a bucket up there so we're in this section here i'm just going to pick up where i left off i want to see how much gold we left the other day which should be a little bit this crevice opened right up i was not expecting it to do that the last time i was here and it means that there could be really good pockets of gold in here. The garnets are a byproduct today. I'm not actually really interested in them because there are other spots I can get bigger ones. I was just hoping to see some specimen pieces. So if we get that, that's great. But otherwise, we're here for the gold and I would like to be able to get maybe a gram or two today out of this spot. Now, I pulled out a reasonable size, well, big picker, small nugget. So I am checking my classifiers today to make sure that I'm not throwing away anything substantially huge. And I am panning off where I've test panned earlier. And I 100% know that there is absolutely no gold or anything worthwhile in this area. It's a really important thing to do when you are panning off like this because too many times have I dumped my tailings in on top of exactly where I need to dig later on. Oh yeah, we've got some coarse heavies in there. This is the leftover dregs from where I finished up the other day when I ran out of time and a big storm came through. So. I don't know if we'll see spectacular gold first pan, but we'll probably see a little bit. Oh yes, no, 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 look at that, straight away. Check that gold out right there. Come on, with me. I like collecting all the concentrates because all the concentrates go into my pay dirt buckets. Buckets, pans, pay dirt pans, pay dirt, pay dirts, pay dirt bags. Far out, that was a good pan. Oh, mama. Hey, some good gold. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 good specs. Um, there's a bunch of flower gold mixed in it as well. There's some little garnets. Oh, hell yeah, Fernster. First pan of the day. It's going to be a good day. It is going to be a good day. The Abbey pumps are only really good for cleaning off the bottom of your spot, not 
so much good for digging. Digging with a yabby pump is a nightmare. So, I just wanna see what's down there. If it's worth getting the shovel in. Oh, I might get the shovel over here. Thank you. <laughs> Oi, Fern, here. I got my shovel. That's a lie, this isn't a shovel, this is a spoon. This is how big the spoon is that I use to shovel dessert into my pie hole. So, gold is so dense it tends to sink into the bedrock. It will sink into fractured or decaying bedrock. That's why we like finding it. Fractured, decaying bedrock. Yeah, you can get fractured, decaying granite, fractured, decaying schist in this case, um, sandstones. They all have the ability to fracture apart or turn into a clay. And when they do that, they offer these little tiny gaps that the gold gets to sink down into and hide from prospectors like me. But I know it's there, so I come along with a shovel and break it up. You've got to do that. Because if you don't, you're going to miss the best gold. The best gold is always the deepest. I don't know if this pan will be good, but at least we've broken up the bedrock and it's going to give us a place to use the yabby pump, which is where we'll get the really good gold. I hope to find oh, at least as much gold as I got the other day. Because I'm colorblind, you're gonna see stuff that I'm not gonna see. No nuggets though. Now, Batea pans are really accurate. They're actually extraordinarily good at keeping and holding on to heavy materials like gold, like gemstones. But there is a very particular technique that you gotta use with them to get it. Now, I used to use a spinning technique that works pretty well, but you can make mistakes where you'll blow gold and gemstones out. But this method where you tilt the pan at the back, push it forward, and then pull it backwards towards yourself, sheds off the lights from the top. The water can never access the heavies so long as you keep stratifying, and you never tip your pan so nothing can fall out. I found more than a 99% recovery rate using these pans and they are very fast. Do the little swirl. Now, I don't think we're gonna see as much gold in this one as we saw in the last one, because the last one was yabby pumping the bedrock that I left here last time, and this one was just opening up new ground, and the gold here tends to sit in the bedrock more than anywhere else. Oh, we got a nice big flake though, look at that. Straight away. That's cool. Yeah, a couple little nano dots, that's okay. So, I'm not, oh, we got a shotgun pellet too. So we're in the right area, but I gotta get a little deeper. All that was the loose gravels and stuff on top. So I'm gonna open this up and then hopefully once I yab and pump the bottom, we'll get real good gold. Got just a little bit deeper with the shovel and our spec count went up. We got four little flakes out of the surface gravels. On this creek, the surface gravels, if they give you gold, you know there's gonna be good gold on the bedrock. Whereas on places like Reedy Creek, I'd be looking for high concentrations of tin. Tin on Reedy Creek is the indicator for gold, and other things are other indicators for gold in other creek. You really gotta learn your creeks. <laughs> creek maths. All I know is that there's a lot of these in the way. Rock clearing has to be one of the most common things I do. My God, do I do a lot of rock clearing. There is a super nice piece of fool's gold or iron pyrite down in this seam of schist. It had me going there for a second. It had me real going. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be on a bloody bonanza if that's what I think it is, because there was a quartz vein. But no, it was just the gods of rock teasing me, edging me. <sighs> you think sacrificing all those chickens would make a difference, but apparently not. Ooh, that's a big one. Do I have the forearm muscles to do this? I do. Oh. Yeah. Good. Snack. Why do you follow me? Fern, as a dog tough, what's like your hardest level of education? She doesn't want to talk about it. I think this will be the last pan I show you until I get down to the really decent stuff I know is on the bottom. Hopefully this one's good. A little bit of black sand. Oh yeah, we got gold, we got gold. It's all very fine though. We're still in that overburdened material. Got one there, one there, tiny. 
not what we're after yet but i know on the bedrock's going to be good you saw that first pan that's not even as good as it gets oh it is finally time it's going to be good i think it's going to be good one concerning thing but i think it's going to be good it took fern about 10 pans worth of soil to get this area clear i just took my first yabby pump pan off the bottom and that's what i got way better pieces look at the size of that flake and that's what we're getting in every pan on the bottom in the really rich sections you'll get 10 or 20 of these displacement the best gold i've got so far out of this trench was just up here but the spec count got really good over here with a bit more flying gold. The only thing that concerns me is just at this point, there is a hump of bedrock that is blocking the flow of that trench and it's not breaking up. So either the best gold is going to be on this face or there is a little crevice that pinches around the outside. So in there or on here is where I'm thinking the good gold is going to be. And I know some of you don't like the first person view because it makes you feel seasick and that. And I get that, but being hands-free is really advantageous when prospecting and making videos. So I'm gonna do a couple of pans from FPV and a couple of pans the normal way. That way you get the best of both worlds. You can be seasick and not seasick at the same time. Have your ginger tablets now. Because this pan's made out of wood, you kind of need a rock to stop it floating away. And even then, stay. All right, we're gonna do the front face of that bedrock uplift. I reckon there's going to be really good gold off that front face because as the velocity slows down, as it goes up over the top of it, the gold should drop out and it's super jagged, offering a good trap. That's my theory and I'm sticking with it. Oh, I gotta get that. You gotta leave room for the testicles when doing this. It's important. <laughs> Feels like we've run out of gravel, have we? We kind of have. Oh no, there's a big pocket of it down there. Behind rocks! Come on. Big nug. That's what I want. Big nug. That's a cool looking crystal rock. I'm gonna throw that in my bucket. Look how red like, and brown and iron stained this bedrock is. Surely there's got to be more garnet specimens here. I found one in my tailings. What are you doing? It is snake season here in Australia. So it's very important that fern sticks pretty damn close to me. Isn't that right? Hey, you mother fluffer. I love her, but damn, she causes me some stress sometimes. <laughs> nah, this looks good. The dirt looks heavy, and by that I mean it doesn't move as freely as the lighter material will in your pan, especially the batea pan. You can see you can see the difference between uh, light soils and, and dense soils in the batea pan really clearly. So denser soils, that's good, means an accumulation of heavies. So maybe, leave it, yes! There's some lizards playing over there, but I don't want her to get interested in things that look like reptiles for reasons I just stated. You've got up, can I just? You had a mosquito on your face. All right, that's as far as I want to take it down. You ready to go see what's in the bucket, Fernie? Come on. I reckon this is going to be good. I say that because of the way the soil's moving. You never can tell though, until you, until you do it. Oh, we've got some good garnet. Some, some good garnet pieces anyway. Yeah, I was expecting a little more. It's about what we got in the last pan without the really big flake. Like it's there. There'd be 10 good flakes there plus some micro up here. So we only just started getting on the bedrock. Let's keep looking. So this is the back side of that mound now. Feels like there's a lot of rock down there. Oh no, it's actually pretty clean. We didn't get a bad spec count last pan, it's just that I know that the gold in this particular area is really rich in pockets. And so that's what I'm looking for, is those really rich pockets that I, I can do two or three pans and get a whole day's worth of gold. Let's find out. Oh, I could already see better gold. 
Yeah, I can see way better gold in this. Oh yeah. Oh damn. Oh, it was all on the other side. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's a pocket. That's a little pocket. That right there is about 20 to $30 worth of gold in one pan. Straight away, 30 bucks. Like bending over and picking up a 20 and $30 note off the ground. Oh, that's unreal. Oh, I love it when that happens. Oh, and there's a bunch of fine gold with it. Exactly what you hope for in a spot like this. It's always hard to show on a GoPro. I, all the cleanups and stuff will be filmed with a macro camera where you'll be able to really get a good appreciation for the size of the pieces. But like, this is what we're here for. 30 bucks worth of gold, 20, 30 bucks worth of gold. All that fine stuff too. One pan. I'm gonna have to clean this up properly and we're gonna do that by probably removing more of this soil over here because there's more soil that's coming up over some bedrock in this section and there might be gold there, but also breaking apart all the shattered stuff down the bottom. And for that, I need this, a hook. This is from Matt's Crevice Tools. Matt's uh, provided me with a couple of classifier baskets and hooks, just like this one. For now, the gold can go in the bucket. Mini yeet. That was a good shot. Dads around the world will be proud of that shot. Boss, can I have the crevice hook, please? Thank you. The whole point of doing this is to break up any of that shattered broken bedrock that might be just hiding some more of those bigger pieces and i mean the pieces we just saw were excellent that's exactly what we're after so we've got to break that bedrock up like i don't know if it's possible but if your friend's in a really bad relationship getting one of these and just breaking up the relationship that's kind of what we've got to do break it up This has to be one of the most exciting parts is I look at the pan and I think to myself, you know, I have guaranteed that if there is a piece of gold in this pan, I picked it up with my own hands, I got it out of that crevice, and now all I gotta do is use gravity to my advantage, like a super villain. And I mean, isn't that every little boy's dream to become a super villain? I mean, superhero? Superhero, sure. I wanted to be the hero. I definitely didn't want to be Joker and just watch the world burn. Maybe that's what that reoccurring dream is about. But there is something extremely gratifying about pulling gold out of the ground with your own two hands. I think that's what makes it addictive to me. Even one little flake, it's like, yes, I found that. Even though I ripped the hell out of the bedrock, there's no guarantee that there's going to be good gold in there. We might have already been in it considering I'd broken up with the shovel. We'll find out in a second. Oh no, we got good gold. We've got good gold. It's very fine. We didn't get big chunky bits, but this is all the stuff that was in the bedrock itself. Good spec count in there. Just not the size that we got in the last pair. And that's all right. I mean, that's the thing, right? You just, you can't tell. It's still gonna add up. It's gonna be a bloody good day. I haven't seen anything in this pan that indicates it's going to be good, but I remembered that there was a really tight pack crevice down there the last time I was here and I didn't have a crevice hook. So I just ripped the crap out of it and Yabby pumped up what came from that crevice. This is what the dirt looks like. And I just want to know because that's where some of the best gold came from yesterday. Oh, did you see that? There was a big flash. There was a big flash. Yeah, I left that here the other day. Oh, what? That's the best pan of the day. That is so good. Oh my God, there's so much gold in there right now. Look at that. That's one pan. That's one pan from a place that's already been worked. Oh man, it's just in pockets down there. That's unreal. That is unreal. That is so good, that's one pan. Look how big that flake is. Those are massive flakes. Like for my region, I call them nuggets, but I know they're flakes. That's just, that's so good. I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna rip this whole crevice back, this whole crevice back, and see what comes out of it. Ah, yes, gotcha. Ah, oh, broke it. Good, 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 good. I would argue that this piece of PVC pipe has made me more money gold prospecting than all of my high bankers. Yabby pumps are the best tool that you can have 
on the creek with you. I mean, this is literally three pieces of PVC pipe and some cloth tape. And you can fix it on the fly. And I've now had it for about four years, I think. I've had it for a really long time. All right, I don't know if we're gonna go as good the second time because like obviously the first time is probably going to be the best, right? See, we didn't get anywhere near as much dirt that time. I got about a full pan's worth the first time. So we're probably not gonna see as good of a result, but I think we'll still see a decent show of color. Big nugget, big nugget. Like, you know, three grammer, three gram nugget, come on. So you don't get much black sand because it's so it's so much lighter than the gold and the bedrock prevents it from getting in there just due to friction. Whereas the gold has that density to sink into it. Oh, I don't feel lucky, eh? Oh no, I can see gold. Okay, I don't think it's gonna be as good as the other one, but I still know, oh yes, we still got some good pieces. We still got some good pieces, look at that. Oh, we actually got a really good spec count again. Really good, but the gold's far, far less than what it was. So, like, I'm not gonna argue. That's a good pan. That'd be a great pan on Reedy. So, perspective, right? That's so good. This could also be good. In much the same way that I scratched out the crevice on this side, I also scratched out a crevice on that side. Same exact principles. The only question is, is there still gold there? Same spot, and I got better gold. You just never know when it's gonna pop out, eh? That's some beautiful looking stuff. Actually starting to get some halfway decent size garnet piece. These little stones are quite valuable if you get the right ones. They're up to $400 a carat. Not this one, but one day it'll happen. As I'm pushing this way, I'm getting less gold. So I think the concentration was definitely in this belt and most of this belt has now been very thoroughly worked. Hatch off. And my GoPro on, I actually want to open up this section just here. Where's the hardest part? Trying to get your shovel into it. Oh, it's a deep hole now. Oh, I see we've rolled in some wombat poo. Oh, very nice. Yes, nice. Hey, so you're not getting in the car like that. Oh, bath of shame. Everyone on the internet gets to wash, get to what gets to watch you get washed on the creek for your delicious smells. Oh my god, look at your tail. Ah, 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 hey! I'll finish that later. Lesson of the day. Don't roll in shit before a lift. Do it after. Put the poo you intend to roll in in a bag and take it home. Do it in the privacy of your lounge room. Oh, I see one flake. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. That's actually not a bad little pan. Get rid of that stuff. That, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 pieces. 17 pieces and a nice garnet. I got way more bedrock and clay in this one. Oh, look at that. Bedrock and clay. Look at the size of that bit. That's a bloody good flake. So more bedrock, more clay, and it was right where I thought it was going to be. That's a good pan. Again, that's probably a $10, $15 pan. Just for the gold that's there, that's visible. <laughs> <gasps> oh, that's what we're talking about. That's bloody brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Really good spec count. Right, if there's anything I've learned in my time doing this, it's that this will be better. That was a good pan, but I wonder how much is actually hiding in the cracks and crevices on the bedrock. And the only way to ever find that out is with a yabby pump. I mean, we got a good pan here right at the start of the day. 
and I hadn't considered that that bedrock crevice would wrap around the back here and now that we know it does and we got those confirmation pans that are showing us that it's actually quite good I mean maybe we'll get another really good one with a with a bunch of pickers in it oh it's the first proper hot day that we've had so I absolutely cannot wait until winter comes back I despise summer in Australia the worst season a lot of people are going to disagree with me but I hate it it's just the worst the dirt feels good the dirt feels good the dirt feels heavy it's not moving very much I reckon we might get an okay pan out of this oh there's gold already there's gold already look at that so I know it's going to be a good pan wow it's not going to be barren of gold anyway now for the gold oh yeah a little pile of gold no big bits but bloody hell that's a ripper spec count there'd probably be 25 to 30 flakes there that is real good i i reckon we're going to be well over a gram today i think we're going to probably make more maybe 150 to 200 bucks in gold very next pan same exact spot same exact methodology with the abbey pump super solid result there happy as that crevice was amazing i ended up working it for two days about four hours a day i also live streamed the entire cleanup process and you can watch that over on my live stream playlist right now it's a video worth watching because that is what we managed to recover and while i was doing the live stream i actually gave one of my pay dirt bags away completely to free for a random viewer you can purchase your own pay dirt bags from the oldmoldy.com.au where you get the gold and gemstones and crystals that we dig out on the creek just like this what i can say is the gold on this creek is incredibly coarse and chunky even inverted commas the fine gold has shape about it and i mean just look at that look at that you ready if that doesn't do it for you i can't help you the biggest piece of gold was already weighed on my live stream but i'm going to throw it on the scales now so you can have a guess i know how big it was three two one drop your guess that, at today's gold prices, is a $20 piece of gold. I think we've honestly got more than two grams of gold here. We're gonna find out though. Let's get this stuff clinking onto the scales. Some of it's gonna roll off and miss the little pan, of course. We've already got a gram. Oh, yeah, I reckon, okay, 2.2, that's my guess. We're well over that, 2.7. Oh, if I hadn't missed the scales with a couple of bits, let's put this chunky boy on. Just, just shy of three grams. That is worth 390 Australian dollary dues. Remember, gold is measured in troy ounces, not regular ounces, and dollary dues aren't worth as much as us -ary dues but $390 for just a couple of hours work using an old traditional gold pan is nothing short of phenomenal. 